And as there's nearly 30 down power lines on Maui, this is due to the winds and the fire. Most of them are in Lahaina, so that means that phone service and power is out in most areas. Hawaiian Electric is asking people to have patience as they try and fix it. The Department of Defense says it could take up to a month to restore fiber optic services. And we wanted to learn more about what firefighters are dealing with, the conditions they're up against right now that's making it hard for them to gain the upper hand. So joining us now live is Clay Trauernicht, a wildfire expert and assistant specialist at UH Manoa. Thank you so much for joining us, Clay. Now, you've said that this is the worst case weather for a fire. So can you explain what exactly makes these fires so dangerous? Sure. Uh, first of all, the, the weather conditions we're experiencing the past few days, uh, a combination of high winds and really low relative humidity, which kind of sucks the moisture out of the, the vegetation um, and it causes them to sort of behave in these explosive uh, explosive fire conditions that we're, that we're seeing across the landscape, both upcountry and, and, and on West Maui. Um, and then in addition to that, really what's driving this is these huge expanses of grasslands surrounding our communities. Um, and so the firefighters are kind of this worst case scenario um, in terms of Couple decades, and, and that's really all relates back to the kind of legacy of post post plantation era where we're, we're living now, and trying to deal with um, all these unmanaged fuels that have really uh, increased fire risk around our communities. And you know, we're dealing with this really windy weather. What areas in Hawaii, in general, are most susceptible to these devastating fires? Well, it's really across the board, right? So we kind of have frequent human caused ignitions kind of year round. And so when you get these uh, high wind events that are accelerating down the slopes of the mountains um, along the coast where all that uh, vegetation is much drier from the kind of dry dry spell we've had, uh, drought conditions we're experiencing. Again, it's just that, that perfect combination. Um, and we kind of seeing this Kind of, uh, there's a lot more that we could be doing um, in advance of the fires when they happen. So by the time the fire starts, for a lot of the actions we should be taking, it's a bit too late. And and by that I mean just managing the fuels around our communities, doing fuel breaks, implementing grazing, uh, reestablishing agriculture, basically anything that would make that vegetation less likely to burn. Reforestation, restoration. Um, there's a lot of projects and people doing these things across the state, kind of at small scale, showing that that we can actually reduce fire risk and be less sensitive to these these weather events uh, but it's something we really need to be thinking about how to do it at, at larger scales and really that's to make the conditions safer for for the fire responders out there and so you know speaking of that moving forward looking forward what are some of the potential solutions that you see and and is there anything that officials should do to prevent wildfires well, you know, public education is definitely an important piece in terms of trying to, you know, uh, reduce risky activities when conditions are like this. So use of limiting the use of machinery and parking your car in tall grass and things like that. Um, the big thing that we hear from firefighters is this uh, idea of doing more pre-suppression actions. So these are actions we can take, as I was saying, long before the fires start, uh, where you create networks of fuel breaks, you can bring in cattle to kind of knock down these fuels and really uh, reduce the risk uh, of these fires starting and spreading as explosively as they are. Um, the benefit of this, right, the, 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 the good part Part of the story is that there are actions that we can take. It's within our control to, to change the vegetation, whereas the weather conditions, not so much.